So in this lecture, we're going to briefly review and compare solids to fluids. So let's begin with the solids. Now within a solid substance, the individual molecules are held together by strong intermolecular bonds. And sometimes these strong intermolecular bonds are known as permanent bonds. Now what that basically means is that the individual molecules do not translate or rotate within the solid substance. The only type of motion that solid individual molecules experience is vibrational motion and this vibrational motion comes from electrostatic forces that are created from the positively charged nucleus and the electrons found orbiting that nucleus. Now because of these strong intermolecular bonds the solid molecules or the solid substance can withstand forces in any direction and that simply means that solids are not compressible. So if I take any solid like this water bottle and I push on it from any direction at any angle at any different position this will not compress. This substance, the solid substance has the capability of withstanding forces acting at any direction to this substance and this makes up the solid substance. So now let's look at the fluids. Now fluids include both liquids as well as gases and fluids unlike solids have weak intermolecular bonds that constantly break and reform and that means that they have translational, rotational as well as vibrational motion. Translational simply means they move along any axis in any given direction. Rotational simply means when they actually translate they also rotate as would a frisbee when thrown. And vibrational motion means the same thing that I meant up here. This is the motion due to electrostatic forces created by the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electrons. Now, fluids can only withstand forces acting perpendicular to the surface. And that's exactly why fluids will take the shape of the container. So if I take my solid container and I fill this with a fluid, say water, the fluid will take the shape of this container. And that's because it cannot withstand forces unless those forces are acting perpendicular to the surface of our fluid. So for example, if we take a ship or a boat and place that boat into the water or into the ocean, the water conforms to the shape of the boat so that all the forces are perpendicular to the surface of the water.